What's going on YouTube? Well, look at cars. We're going to look at some. We're uh, preparing for 23, 2023. Got some cars in. We're going to look at Auto World. Finally saw these on the shelves. And uh, it's been tough. I mean, this new set's probably been out for a <laughs> at least a month or two that I've seen. I caught these three. They're basically the only ones left. This is the set with the Ford GT40, the street-going version. The homologated one, as they'd say. But I didn't find that one, but I found some of the other cool stuff, and we'll take a look. And, of course, another good return brand to the collection, Mini GT. Love that stuff. So we're going to look at those cars as well. Got a couple of new castings to share. All right. I want the show. Well, let's start off with a perennial favorite, Auto World. This is a... <laughs> in the package, we'll take it out. That way I can show everybody how I do it. If you haven't been familiar. Yellow Jeep. Acid Yellow. Now this is going back to 17. They're tooling up these wheels. They've been using those Rubicon wheels. This is more of a standard Jeep Sport unlimited wheel. So we'll take a look. Looks like it's very cleanly done. Of course, I have a little bit of an issue with this casting because of the wedge shape. If you can see how it's like a wedge. Green lights. Wranglers not not doesn't have that problem. They're pretty much parallel. Information on the back. Now it looks like these are all so I got three out of the six. This is release three version A. So we saw these. Let's take a look here. So we'll start by just cutting on the bottom. I have to use the other knife. This one's not as sharp, but only go up to the top. We're not going to take the whole thing. If these vehicles need to be put back in the package, you can easily do it without ripping it all up off. Hot Wheels Premium and stuff like that, I will rip the the blister off, but keep the card. So let's take a look. JK. Collection's building up. I got most of the main line domain release from Auto World. Most of them. I don't have all of them. It's been some special editions. But it's a cool casting anyway, even with the this wedge, as you can see. But it's not bad. Let's take a look. Opening hood, got the vented hood. They were really happy about that hood that they retooled for this casting. You know, a lot of cars, even going back in the day, we can use the same body, maybe change the bumpers, headlights, some wheels. We've got a different trim or a different version of the vehicle. So. A lot of die-cast companies, Auto World included, do that. They try to do the same badge engineering, the same body uh, cost savings that the ma real life manufacturer does. So, you know, we're tooling up castings and, and tool and die for these little cars. And the cost savings kind of coincides the same way. We're able to do a few models, a few years, basically out of the same core. So we'll take a look at the BFG's narrow tire a little bit more narrow probably than a factory scale but it does roll good let's take a zoom treads nice the white tops nice you can see they just paint the tail lights on casting might be getting a little old so we can see you know if we look through this it's a little bit blocky and chunky the yellow since it's a regular non-metallic it's going to have that ghosting in there and all that. But it's not too bad if you look at it. Again, this is under magnification. Still rolls good. 3.6 liter engine in this vehicle. They're back to four cylinders now as an option. Six is and then... We have hybrid, plug-in hybrid drivetrains now in the new ones. Of course, this is the body style predecessor. And this one ran for a long time, over 10 years almost, I think. This body style after the the old Jeep from before this got discontinued. So, cool casting. A lot of people like these Wranglers. And some of the black here needs to be touched up, but that's okay. We might do that. I might just leave it alone. So here's another Jeep for the collection. All right, let's back her up. 
You can see I lined up some mini GTs in anticipation of some mini GTs that we're going to look at. I got more, of course, that aren't brought down from the shelf, but that's okay. All right, continuing on. Now, another one that was kind of late to the party. I found this after the was out. So this is making a return after a few years of being absent. The Pontiac Grand Prix. Look at that thing. Gorgeous car. And this is something, you know, unique to Auto Worlds. You know, when they do the older school American cars. They seem to be much more in tune with these kind of mid-60s, early 60s, late 50s. Because they can go back to Racing Champion and Johnny Lightning. Ertl. All those things, they have these kind of cars. Now, this is Auto World specific. This was not like a deluxe. It wasn't a Johnny Lightning, any of that. So, we'll take a look. Now, I have the old blue one. They made these. This is one of the earlier, when Auto World went to these premiums like this. You know, with the boxes still. This goes back back then. So, But a very well done casting and very sharp. It's got a lot of good detail on it. We'll take a look. So this is a Royal Bobcat car, and basically what that means is, if you read this, but basically another dealer prep car, dealer package. This was very popular. The bigger dealers could spend the money up front, outfit the cars, make the profit on, on the equipment that they put in the vehicle. Sometimes they'd have a good amount of sway with the manufacturer. And they do this Copo cars through their dealership, meaning that you really wasn't something that was shown in the, the ordering catalog or the manufacturer brochure as an option that you could spec on your vehicle. You know, they'd say, okay, I want to put this motor, this transmission, this carb. And sometimes uh, they went as far as they could with the manufacturer, and then they'd still do even more to it after it came delivered after the dealer prepped it after they put the performance parts on still would that provide a warranty you know talk about ball with motion yanko those type of guys you know they were they were going above and beyond maybe putting aftermarket stuff on the vehicles that wasn't provided by the manufacturer but the royal bobcat car pretty much was a pretty sure all pontiac gm stuff maybe a few aftermarket things but big engines, probably 421 at this point. What am I thinking? You know, because it's this is a 64 car. It's in Sunfire Red, so it's pretty. There's another color. I forget what it was. I think it's the tan or the gold bronze. But this this kind of reddish orange with the white, very pretty. Highly optioned too. These Royal Bobcats. This one looks like it has the Kelsey Hayes alloys, which was a kind of a unique thing back then. Not too many people did solid alloy wheels. Most of it was spoked. Spoked really was the high-end lightened, quote-unquote, wheel before we got these forged wheels, the aluminum wheels, the cast wheels. It's either a steel wheel or spokes. And spokes really was, for a long time, what your performance wheel was. And that was your lightened wheel. That's why you'd see them on sports cars a lot, racing vehicles. But after that, it went away, and they're able to really get these alloys under control, the casting, the forging, the machining process, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then we started seeing the solid wheels. You know, through the 60s, basically, that became very popular. It was available on factory vehicles. The Mopar people that might be listening to this, you probably know about Mopar had those recall wheels that they did. So they're super rare when you see them on a vehicle. Because, you know, back then when you were doing it through the OEM and you weren't racing the wheel and you only had a certain, like you were only driving the car for a day. You know, your, your issues with casting or cracks or alloys might not have shown up as fast as a daily driver. So Chrysler had those problems. I believe it was the Chrysler vehicle. It kind of looked like a snowflake tire. Matching dash. Gold steering wheel. A lot of these cars are automatic, but you can get four speeds. Very popular with Pontiac up into the mid-60s. Tri-power two barrels. So you'd have three two-barrel carbs. Let's see what the setup is on this. We really didn't look in there very well. We have it on magnification. Nothing really in there. Kind of a blue block and that's it. So 
nothing to report let's zoom again make this crisp decent car now what i did with my pontiac i'll get it down my old one now this car we could see how the casting might have deteriorated over the years i think the last time we saw these out was maybe 15 16 17 model time frame So this is my blue one. Now this blue is a metallic, a heavy metallic, just like this. But if you look at the difference, do you see how paint's not blocked up on the car as much? It seems to flow a little bit thinner, but not bad. I do have to add a little silver to this because the way these cars, these two-piece wheels were, you got to put a little silver in there. So. That'll get corrected. Other than that, white walls are the same. They're using the same tires. This is their old school bias ply that they've had. Nice, thick side wall, sharp. And unlike green light, you know, they usually don't have a lot of flashing. I went through these tires and made them smooth. Sometimes you'll have a chunk of flashing on these tires. But other than that, once you take it off, they're still round and true. Grill looks good. You can see the Royal Bobcat. See the difference in the front. Looks like they added some grill detail there. And I can't remember if this maybe this, this is 64 63, but I think they're both 64 cars. So just wanted to refresh my memory. It's really nice. They made a bunch. I think there's about maybe four, five, six, seven, eight of these released. There is a resource online. Auto World Collector, it's not sponsored by the manufacturer, but basically whoever runs that website, and some of you might be familiar with it, you can look it up by the set number, like the set release date, or just by casting. So if you just want to be like, oh, I collect the Pontiac, it shows you all of them. And they're getting pretty good about the special edition cars too. So that's a good way to kind of look up. Auto World's still kind of a... It's almost like Mini GT where the catalog's not explosive like Greenlight or Matchbox or Hot Wheels where it's almost impossible. You could be, um, it's easier to be a completist on this than probably any other bands just because, you know, they'll do six models, so 12, so, you know, A and B, or five. Is it six or five? I think it's six. But anyway, let me see. I always forget. Yeah, six. Um, and you can get them. You know, you can backdate them. They do get valuable, though, it seems like, especially the earlier cars. They've been staircasing up production numbers. They stopped releasing it. They stopped showing it on the cards. You want to bring that up again? You look at this card. It doesn't say one of anymore. I think that's fine. Um, you know, there's, there's pros and cons, I guess you could say, about having, you know, the production number listed. Sometimes it creates too much heat for scalpers when they see that limited of. I think the mystery of it is met the market dictate, meaning that if we know that this car is produced and you didn't buy it, and then two years from now you want to go purchase it, someone sending that price is going to go off more price than he is going to go off speculation. So he's going to say, oh, I see 10 of them for sale on eBay. I want to make mine a dollar cheaper. Now, if I go online and I've been looking for maybe three months and I want the orange Pontiac and I'm not seeing it listed, then I know... You know, that's going to be a hard car to find. And it should probably have more value to someone uh, or for sale for a higher number. You know, and I would rather do it be based on that than pure speculation. All right. This is another one. Now, this really, you know, if I had to pick out of all the cars besides the Ford, because I do like that GT40, or you know, like the idea of having a civilian version, a street version, I would say, not a racing version. Even though there's very little distinction back then in the 60s. That would be a good car to find. But the Cadillac in green. So I just really got lucky. So here it is. Coupe de Ville car. These are also, you know, bringing back some hits from the old days. We're talking about a few years ago. This car was last released. At least. This is a 76 car, right? 75. So I believe this car went up to 70. 7, 76, 76, I think 77 is a downsizing, very popular, very 
uh, in the malaise files of the years of the 70s. You know, GM was the leader in downsizing. So let's open this caddy up, and it's a nice looking car. I do prefer the other wheels on it. I don't like the wires as much as the, the solid hub cap, just because I, I think it looks a little bit less aftermarket. But wire wheel was optional on these cars, so they got to show it. I black washed my last wire wheels, meaning that I put a little black paint in there and let it show the detail of the wire spokes and it doesn't take more than a second of dipping your brush in a little bit of black acrylic paint which is water washable and just just kind of putting a lot of water mixed with black and let it flow into the, the holes there but I think right now the chrome looks nice we've talked about this car in past videos if you want a little bit more in depth on the car itself and a little bit of talk about the design look back in in the catalog of the channel but what a cool color real 70s color <laughs> green buyer fire mist green briar fire mist two-tone green we got the vinyl green which is more flat and then we have the car painted so this is kind of how it is out of the package some of the cars we'll look at, I did tune up a little bit. You know, I always kind of go through them if there's issues with the wheels and tires especially. We go ahead and fix that. So, this car seems to be okay. You can see the wobble. See that? Very wobbly, so we'll get that fixed. A lot of times when you see wobble like that out of the package, sometimes you can adjust it by just pushing on it, kind of getting it to flow. If we turn the car around and look at the rim line there, want to see if there's any raised sections so when you spin the tire you'll see if it's lumpy a lot of times when we remove this tire it's lumpy because again there's flashing in there and that's how we get the car to roll nicely this is their earlier style chassis base they did these simpler chassis earlier on uh, going probably from 16, 17, 18 on with the newer toolings the castings of the chassis has been very very good this Pontiac's decent. And I've mentioned this before. I really feel like these whole cars are assembled just like the model kits. Um, the, the the Craftsman series model kits. The, the, the showroom series as they call them now. Basically your curbside kit where it would be a closed body. But they do good detail. Just like a promo basically a promo model where you'd have this detail on the chassis wire axle full detail on the interior and then really good body proportions basically but not a lot else this gives us the benefit of having the engine but yeah but these cars really are made like small model kits the way they're designed and that's just because they're good at what they do so there is the engine or the wheel Arches and the inner fender liners, very nice on this car. Never opened a lot on this casting. The hood never opened up very high. In real life, it does, doesn't does open up super high, but it does open up a little bit higher than this. Still has the issue with the roof line. And I think that's more that we're seeing the bow, the curvature of the roof more than this. Although, if you run a straight line, you know, this door line here still comes up into my eye a little bit not as bad as i remember if we want to get back in time a little bit look at this one so these are the wheels and tires i prefer on this casting i think it looks much better even though they're not the color keyed ones but you could see you know you look down that roof line it's a little slanted but in this scale it's hard you know biggest one of the bigger, longest castings that are in 164, true 164 scale. You can see the tailpipe there. Let's take a look at that back deck. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You see how the casting held up from the olden ones. Still looking good. Still looking good. What does this one say? Luxury. Oregon registration. Green interior, got all the stocks on there, got your tilt wheel and telescoping. Cloth interior, vinyl, leather, 
Very, very cool. So, just a nice looking caddy. And uh, rolls well. Sometimes you just have to fix up the, the way the tires, see how that has some wobble to it in the back. That's easily fixed. Probably have to dismount the wheels. So there we go. Nice caddy. Let's put it here by the other GM. This Pontiac. Back this up. Let's see what we got in the garage today. Got Porsche and a Lambo. Got the Bugatti. Another great casting that Bugatti, I must say. All right, moving through. We're gonna get now. Just <laughs> excuse me. Let's do one green light. Well, actually two. I guess we got two green lights. We're gonna look at. First one is is another Cadillac. <laughs> this is basically the body before the other one got updated. Look at this thing. So this is a low rider. I like this color combination on this car. I think it looks really good. So I decided to get it. It's got the white interior wire wheels. Very cleaned up. This is a 72 car. See the split headlights up there. Uh, so, you know, they've done lowrider versions of that, I think, too, for Miho exclusives, which I don't have, but this one's nice. This one's very nice. It rolls good because they know that when they slam the car down, they basically get rid of the inner fenders on the chassis, and it allows it just to kind of hang out in there. So, very, very cool. Good concept, very unique concept for us now. You know, the last one that really did this was in the 90s and 2000s, Ravel. They kind of got into the to the 164 scale lowriders. But look at this thing. It's got the spider web with the lace. Very cool. Nice blue. I think the second color I like, you know, for cars is blue, not just the green. Here's the package if we haven't seen it yet they're, they're gonna do the same package of course i got went to lobby lobby paid a little bit more than i wanted to but it's okay anyway put it back there so he has a caddy very nice car love the white interior just take a look at that so i guess that's the main part and Greenlight always had a great 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 tampo process inking process on their cars they're always very very crisp with no issues And, of course, they do the caddy detail as well. I just think it's nice. Nice looking car. And it's going to go up on the roof right now with the uh, Impala. So I put a Impala up there. You can see a preview of what's coming. <laughs> but, yeah, it just goes up on the roof there. It sits up there for now. It's my Land Cruisers. <coughs> also got... A little bit of a custom tip we'll look at, too. Next green light car, Laguna. <laughs> so this is their muscle car series. Green light muscle, very old green light series. This is series 27. Just don't issue them as much as some of the other series. Look at this. And this is the other vehicle. Saw this car. Not too many people. It's not like a, it's not a super high seller, I think, just because I think the color. I don't think people like the color. This has the same issue that this one had. The wheels stuck out too far. Posts are too big on the back, so I filed them down. Clean up the flashing on the tires. And that was about it. I think that's all I had to do. I did take the car apart because it did have a lot of, a lot of film, a lot of uh, debris on the inner windows, which we've seen on green light. I don't have to describe that. So I didn't even want to... Do the things. I also suggest you could put this in warm water with some soap and agitate it. That also works. But I, I needed to take this car apart because the uh, the car was listing to one side too. So I had to I had to really fix the chassis. It was hard for me to tell that when I bought the car because there's two of them hanging up. But this one had the cleaner paint line, so I got this one. It's got the Chevy Rallies on it, so it looks good. It's got different taillights because it's a different year than this one. This is a 74. 
and this is a 73 you can see the taillights change they're trying to modernize the car year by year without having to spend a lot of money so they just retooled the taillights makes it probably hard for people on this car to get taillights for this one <laughs> so take a look side profile same casting there and then we have a slight change to the front so it's got the ss badge but went to a square inner signal back from the previous circular one like the cleanliness of the 73 you know they were dealing with the bumper regu regulations in 73 and 74 they made a pretty good attempt at it but this one doesn't have the bumper guards on it so it looks a little bit better i, th I like the green one still much more than the red but the red was kind of cool and it's a rare car uh they sold them I mean, personal luxury coupes a dime a dozen back in the 70s and this is just one of many cars and then one of many option packages not everybody's buying a Lagoon SS you know most people at the Chevelle drove it went to the junkyard <laughs> it wasn't a car to, to keep around you do see these in mint condition and a few people bought them kept them up but the majority of these are lost to history so it's cool to see this car You'd have to really go to car show to see it. You know, if you have your local car scene, you see the muscle cars driving around. It's barely one of these. So you really got to go seek this car out to see it real anymore. Just even these type of Chevelles. Any of the Colonnade cars really are very hard to find. So it's probably more of the reason I bought the car than anything else. <laughs> but it is good. I cleaned it up and it looks nice. All right, so we're going to keep moving along. I think that's all the green light for now. We'll park it by the Cadillac. We've got General Motors Row over there. Now we're going to go to another brand I just absolutely love. Let's take a look at an update from last time we looked. So we got the Cyber Gray Elantra N. Almost 300 horsepower car, front-wheel drive car. And now I got the ceramic white version. I like these overseas boxes because I'm not, you know, getting those huge ass, uh, big clamshell, all that nonsense with the plastic. Basically, the same release as Miho exclusives. It's just, you know, not a limited imported version. So, there it is. And the white looks amazing. I think the car is really cool. It's got the metal badges, so the Hyundai badge and the N badge in the front. Their metal transfer stickers. Same thing with the rear of the car. Just a sweet vehicle. Drives very, very sharp and tight. It's got an aggressive um, front setup with the uh, the way they set the uh, steering angles and everything. It'll chatter like a race car when you park it in a space. It's very, <laughs> it's a very tight car, but good horsepower. Very few cars drive like that with that kind of power nowadays. You know, the other cars, those Ford Focus cars, ST and RS cars, you know, they got good power too. For front-wheel drive, you know, a car that's going to be that 30 grand mic price point. Toyota and those kind of cars. Honda, they got big power on one of them. But I'm telling you, this car is very, very strong. The torque department is incredible. Most of the other cars that are not turbos are turbos. They have a smaller engine. Two-liter turbocharged Really, really big turbo. Very, very fun car. So, this is just an update series on this one because I got the other color. I do like these. It's kind of nice having a modern, just everyday car, even though this is an Elantra. And, you know, Elantra is kind of a normal vehicle. And it's something different than your Civics because a lot of the Civics have been reproduced, but not a lot of Hyundais. <laughs> so, hopefully, they'll do the Genesis soon. I have a feeling they will, but time will tell. We do have the 7 Series from Mini GT coming, the BMW 750, um, I think it's LI, I don't remember if it's IL or whatever, but 750 X drives coming, the black one, I missed out on the first batch that came to the States, now I got one coming, so we'll look at that in a future video. That'll go go with the Mini GT Bentley that I have, hopefully the S Class is coming shortly as again, so they're going to do a Mercedes they're also doing the EQS car, the Mercedes. So we're going to get some of those modern luxury cars. I like Mini GT. Spend my money on a car that's more than $10, but less than $20. Great car to buy. Metal base, of course. Very, very good detail. So just a big fan. And they roll also good. 
rubber mirrors, of course. And the mirrors have been pulled off, uh, fallen off, but I've always been able to find them and glue them back on. So it doesn't bother me. Most people do not actively move the cars around that much, so I understand it's really not a big deal to most people. And it really is not for me either, so not, not that crazy. <laughs> now, let's stay with those two Hyundais for a minute. Let's look at this one. Now, I did get this one as the American version, just because I like the box art on this one. So here it is, Kona N. Now, the ones that have been imported, 1800. There's your stuff on the back. Now, this is in the performance blue color. Check that out. Let's take a look. This one rolls really well. Super, super well. I did no adjusting on this Kona whatsoever. Let me zoom in a little bit. Check this out. So performance blue, flat black wheels. It's kind of a skinny tire, but look how much ground clearance there is. So this thing just rolls awesome. Great looking front end. Still left-hand drive car the way I wanted it. Blacked out Hyundai badge. Now they do this in flat black, but a lot of it's actually gloss black on the real vehicle. So I'm probably going to go around and touch up the grill area on the Elantra and the Kona. Just because it's gloss in real life. So we'll get that changed up. But it looks really good. Metal badge on the back. It's got the actual unique Kona end diffuser on the top. With the triangle stoplight. So just sweet. This is a really sweet car. Dual exhaust tips look really good. Here I'll give you that. Metal base. It's flat black but it's metal base. They try to kind of make it look like it's looks like it could be plastic but it's not so adds weight to it but their their castings are very like intricate delicate they're not very thick like let's say an auto world casting would be or maybe even some green light vehicles they kind of uh use metal where it needs to be used but not everywhere they don't have a post going through the back on this one which is nice they just have metal screw construction but i think what they do is they hide that plate for the screw under that so it's not that post going through which is nice then our lower rocker channel look at that here i'm letting this focus hold on there we go is it gonna go i think this background's messing it up we'll park these elantras over here so your lower rocker panel there look at the wheels it's gorgeous so the wheel that I saw, the ones here in the States, they don't look like that wheel. They're close, but they're not the same. So they look more like this wheel, to tell you the truth. They're not like that, but they're a little bit closer to that look than this look. So maybe I'll change those up one time, but right now we'll just leave it alone. Maybe it's just because it's a wheel based on one from the overseas market. Very, very cool car. All right. Unusual, you know, not everybody wants to buy Kona. I don't think car, car guys, you know, but it's a cool car. Front wheel drive, too. I don't think they do all wheel drive yet for the Kona N. I think the power and everything will blow up the transfer case, so that's not gonna happen. All right, now let's get into some cool stuff, cooler stuff, I guess. We'll move up and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. Uh, look at this, so. I have this, which I'm a huge fan of, and I want to get the black one, but what a cool car. Now, I was like, what is this wide body? And I realized that this is an actual different casting, so I got this one, too. What a cool car. We'll take a look. Another Shelby authorized product. And this one, and we can look at the, the blue one here in a second, but check this out. This is sweet. What a sweet car. So it rolls really good. I set up the back spacing on these wheels because Greenlight does a really good job on the wheels, tires, the axle set up the placement. It's just they're a little bit short. So there was some gap in play. So just like I did on the blue one, I put small little shims on the car, as you can see in there. And now I'm more happy with the way it is i might have those sticking out a little bit too far but i like that kind of custom wide body look so i left it alone you can see there's a little dirt on there 
Let's get that off so it's not distracting. It seems to be the same chassis. Um, really close. Maybe they, maybe it's a little bit wider. But if you look at the two, they look identical. There might be some more space, but I doubt it. Mini GT is also really great because when they cast the car and the chassis and they have these really thin splitters and diffusers on these modern cars they still do it in metal they don't cheap out and do it in plastic so all that sharp details metal body so it makes a very premium car for the price still has the metal transfer sticker for the snake in both cars this one got a little chip these are some of my favorites and, and they do get taken around so it's all right they're cool cars metal transfer on the front and of course the hood's different so we can kind of see the difference it's subtle you know probably in real life it's much more aggressive but on this scale you gotta look at the car for a little bit to see the difference in the width you can kind of see it there on the two fender lines if we're gonna look down the two let's see if I can get a focal point that's a little bit more generous for everybody so you can see it, I think, more from the side, especially in that back quarter panel. See, this is very shallow, and this has a lot more curve to it. So just an awesome car. I like how it's much more subtle. It's not like the Liberty Walk Mustang where it's, it's crazy fenders and all that, which I have nothing to problem with, but I like it when it's a little bit more subtle. I might get the Liberty Walk Mustang just because it is kind of nice. It's got the other wheels. And these are the Shelby uh, carbon fiber wheels. Very expensive. Very, very expensive. Um, let's take a look here. Look at that. <laughs> so, just a cool car. Uh, a little bit more horsepower, too, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I can write that down there. All right. So look at the Mustang. Now, last car, one of my favorite cars, the Stratos HF. So this is the 77 Monte Carlo Rally winner in the Alitalia livery. Just very iconic rally car. So I got this. It's a very neat-looking car. It's got all the stuff on it the wing and the lights so this is also another international box one it's got a great box they get really cool boxes you know and it comes with the inner sleeve so the car doesn't jostle around when you're when it's in there so check a look at this thing just awesome just awesome and they mold the wiper into the glass like they do on Tomica which is really cool so it's a very tiny car there's a street version and they got that one with the lights down they make a blue one now that's a street version with the lights up but yeah totally different wheels and tires on this car very very good tampoing work let everybody just kind of soak it in there's the two the driver and the navigator of course There's your exhaust, and then soft, soft mud flaps. Just awesome. Thin, and they're glued in there perfectly. Just really cool. Just stuff like that I love. You know, a lot of people could have done just an easy hard plastic, but having it there, you know, you won't have to worry about breaking it off. It's so soft. Rubber. A little rubber there. Different. You can see it's different. And this body is actually a different casting. This one's wider, has fender flares on it, and it's a later model than this vehicle. And you can see the rear fenders are skinnier. So it's great. You know, Mini GT is like, all right, we're going to do this one. You know, the, the early 70s one, then we're going to do this one, the mid to late 70s one. And we're not going to skimp on the details. So we're not going to just throw big tires on this this car and call it a day. They actually tooled up the race car, the, the later model, higher spec version. 
I guess they had a couple of different head changes. I mean, they had a 24 valve high output, and then they had to go cut that down. So I think the 77 car had a power disadvantage from the old one, but I can't remember. Maybe they made up for it other ways. But the rallying establishment didn't want all the all the goodies, I guess. Look at that thing. Rally Monte Carlo winner. Car's getting less competitive as it got towards the 80s, although um, it was pretty good, but it had some issues also with mechanicals, transmission, things like that. But very light and powerful car. Even though all-wheel drive is becoming to become you know, something that was going to eclipse this car. You know, back then it was the deal. It was the right one. Having traction with rear-wheel drive with a mid-engine really helped. It wasn't overly complicated. Um, but it, it did really well. So, what a cool car. Very unique car in history, too. So, it was a little short. Short one today. Just looking at a few vehicles. But, more to come. More to come. We got some bigger scales too that we'll look at too. Hope everybody's been having a good one and a good new year so far. We're gonna have more cars to come. Thank you for all your comments and all your your new subscriptions and likes. Really do appreciate. It. Channel loves you for that. And uh, more to come. Till next time.